job tonight. And, um, like I said, they, we've talked to, uh, I, I, there's no telling how many people we've talked to this week. Um, God touching. Uh, sometimes people just need a word from God. Uh, you pray for us tonight. There's uh, so much been on my mind today. Uh, seems like I've preached all day long. Uh, one way or the other. And uh, I was even uh, looking for the scripture when Brother Lester went to quoting it there. You know, he teaches us to strive for perfection. Amen. Amen. And uh, I was looking for that verse whenever you quoted the Scripture and the Word of God. Uh, you, you pray just a few minutes. I've, uh, a lot of things have been on my mind in the last little while. and I've seen a lot of things in the Spirit. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm like Brother Rick. I thank God that uh, I've had two slip discs. I thank God for that. It slowed me down to where I've had to listen. Uh, I've read more in the Word of God than I have in a long time. Sit there at the house and just read the Word of God, and study and things on my mind. And um, I thank God that He's got me up a walking. Uh, I know God's going to fix things. I don't know when. I know it's coming. And uh, whenever I get to talk to the people I need to talk to and do the things that I'm supposed to be doing and get in the right state of mind. I tell you, sometimes we run to and fro and we're just missing the mark. Um, I, I believe Jerry taught on that. Uh, you know, the word sin, back in the old Bible, when the archers missed the mark, they called it sin. Amen. And uh, sometimes you can be saved and, and you're missing the mark. Amen. Amen. You're not exactly where God wants you to be. You ever felt like that? But it's amazing how God will put things in your life to stop you dead in your tracks to where you'll change your direction. Amen? Uh, sometimes that's the way it works. But you pray just a few minutes. I, I've seen a lot of things in the last little while. And, um, if you will, turn with me to the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Very familiar scripture. Uh, I preach today to myself, to everybody else, and uh, it's just been some kind of a day today. I've just had me a spell, amen. Uh, I've done so much today, my back's sore. Uh, it's just, it just comes so strong. It's just been so strong today that... Uh, Sometimes it's just hard to stand. <laughs> a uh, oh, praise God! I felt like running today and couldn't run. So you pray just a minute. Uh, I, I want to try to sing this song. We'll get in the Word of God and and try to mind the Spirit of God this this evening. I, I just come to do what God want me to do. I, I don't know nothing, Jerry. Say Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And uh, I think that'll get the job done. That's right. Amen. Even God down over there in the Word of God where Jesus told him, said, Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And he said, This is a hard saying. Who can keep it? Amen. And the Bible said one by one, the, the multitude started going away. Amen. Started going away. It's too hard to say for him to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Amen. It's too hard a saying for him to keep the sayings of the prophecy of the book. Amen. It's too hard for him to ask for him to ask him, Amen, to do. He said, "I this is, good Lord. He said, "I'm not that bread that was sent down in the wilderness to your fathers." But he said, "I'm the bread of life." Amen. 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 Praise God. And he said, "Whosoever eat of this bread, Amen, he'll never ever hunger again." And praise God. He talked about eating his flesh. He said they'd never die. And he went on to tell them, he said, they that believe shall never die, man. Amen. Praise God, we've got something that people don't have. It's everlasting life. Amen. But amen, praise God, I'm glad for a few, amen. They ain't going to be many in the last day. Amen. They ain't going to be many when the trumpet sounds. The Bible said, straight as the gate and there's a way to lead it the life if you be there to find it. I, amen. Everybody that sat in the house of God ain't going. I, amen. It'll take those that's faithful to God. I, amen. I thought about the word faithful. 
faithfulness. Amen. Over the lamentation, he said, Great is thy faithfulness. You know why great is God's faithfulness? Because he never left us. Amen. He's faithful to every need we have. Amen. But praise God, are we faithful to God? Lord, help us to need it. Praise God, how faithful are we? We can't be faithful to nothing. Faithful to keep our word. Can't be faithful to the house of God, the house of prayer. Ain't faithful to read the word of God. We're not faithful to do the things. That God said to do, and God said it's not. Amen. Grievous. My God, I, I was. They so much come to my mind that the Bible said it that this, they just started going away. And the twelve was there, and he said, "Well, you go away also." And he said, "Where, Lord? Thou holdest the worst eternal life. Where are we going to go?" What hope have we outside of Christ? Amen. Huh? He's a hope and glory, but I, I've got a. I, Lord have mercy. There's so much coming. You pray just a minute. I thought about. I thought about old Moses over there, and the Bible said he died. They buried him, nobody even knows where the grave's at, not even to this day. He can tell nobody, did he? It's a secret of God. Now I've heard preachers say that Moses uh, sinned and didn't get to go to heaven. The Bible said he told how old he was. The Bible said, you know, his vision was never dim. His eyes wasn't dim. Amen. Praise God. He could see farther than anybody. Amen. And ever, I'm telling you now, this is a man here. According to the Word of God, God took him up on the mountain. He looked over into the promised land. He sought to see it, brother. He viewed it, amen. Praise be unto God. Let me tell you something. But there's a young man chosen to take God's people on in, wasn't it? Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hey, so much. I've got to. You pray just a minute, will you? Got a lot on my mind. The Word of God just been running through my mind all day. And you just pray just a minute. God being our helper. And, um, I don't even know if I can sing this song or not. Many times here in life I've walked through dark valleys and I question, oh Lord, when I don't understand. Then I hear Jesus say, My child, just keep looking. Or the next hill, there's a beautiful land. Someday I shall stand on the top of Mount Zion. And I'll get to look into Canaan's fair land. I'll sing and I'll shout when I reach that city. No, I'll never walk in the valley again. Someday I shall walk through this lonely valley. But Jesus, my Lord, will hold to my hand. Yes, thanks be to God. It will be just a shadow when on top of Mount Zion I stand. Someday I shall stand on the top of Mount Zion and I'll get to look into Canaan's fire land. I'll sing and I'll shout when I reach 
that she did. No, I'll never walk in the valley again. You pray just a few minutes. God be in our help. I want to read to you some very familiar scripture. It seems like it this morning. I just uh, it just come since early this morning. There's so much coming to my mind, and and um, I thought about all the battles in life and all the things, and um, God was doing doing with His people, and how that the Word of God's being preached, and how that God's people, and and uh, seemed like in the last little while it. Um, all the messages that I've heard the men of God preach uh, it, it's a bringing God's people closer to God and cleaning them up and getting them ready to leave this world there's a battle to come there's a warfare to come there's something coming to God's people that they've never faced before amen there's a great battle amen now I, I'm going to preach just a minute God being my helper and I want you to see something uh, I don't know so much on my mind. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stick with this or not. So you pray just a few minutes. God being my helper. Oh, in the book of Ezekiel 37, the Bible reads like this, and I, I'm going to start reading down about in the first verse and read down through the Word of God. And, and if you will, you read along with me. I'm not much of a reader, not much of anything. Um, but God knows what we need this evening. And God said in His Word, He said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out into the Spirit of the Lord. And He set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, O God, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible said, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Woo! Praise God. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am Lord. Amen. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the shenus, and all of the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, and but there was no breath in them. And then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, Son of man, and say unto the wind, Woo, my God, and say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come. I, from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. Can I get an amen? Praise God. Is there anybody in this church tonight that will believe with me that God can raise our dead folks out of a dead state, out of a valley where they dried up and tore down and their lives been thrown away? Do you believe with me that God Amen. Talk to a lot of people. Amen. But if you go down there yonder in the 
in the book of Ezekiel, amen, and go on down to about the 18th chapter, I believe it is, amen, he told Ezekiel, he said, you go down to the wall, and you'll find a hole in that wall, and he said, you dig in the wall, amen, he said, when you dig in the wall, there'll be a door, I, he said, if you'll open that door, he said, I'll show you the abomination I, of the children of Israel, I, and I get an amen, and I pray down to God, it's time, I, and God's children, I, get right with God, I, and I get an amen, I, the abominations, I, that's made desolate, standing in the holy place, I, where it ought not to be, I, can I get an amen, I, come on, I, the Bible begins to speak, I, he said, when you see the abomination of desolation, I, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, I, standing in the holy place, he said, for all Judea, to flee into the mountains, I, he wasn't talking about the blue red parkway, I, I read about two mountains in the word of God, I, amen, one word mountain, I, amen, Calvary, I, where men and women, I, could trade out the garments of sin, I, or the robes, I, of righteousness, I, can I give an amen, I, word of love, I, was shed for humanity, I, can I get an amen? Well, I found the water was opened up out of Emmanuel's veins. Woo! And the prophet Joel began to prophesy about a mountain over there. And he said, Around Zion was where the Lord dwelt. You know what he was telling people when you see this happen? Amen. Get right with God and stay in the presence of God. Amen. Can I get an amen? For he told them when you see all these signs come to pass, to look up for you know as your redemption draws nigh, even at the door. It's closer to night than it's ever been. Can I get an amen? But our people have been slain and thrown out, cast out and tore apart. But I believe you can leave. I said it while I was a praying when the power of God begins to fall upon people. Praise God. Now listen to me. Everybody ain't going to be happy when the Lord comes. Everybody acts like they're going to be happy, sister. But everybody ain't going to be happy. But the Bible said, Amen, at the whole earth mourn, the Bible said. Amen. And the Bible said that the, the earth, amen, the, they might they hid and run and hid themselves. Amen. Praise God from the face of Him and set upon the throne of God. And those that hid yourself, amen, praise God. The Bible said there was no place found for them. Amen. Let me tell you something tonight. If the Lord Jesus Christ steps out on the clouds of glory tonight, amen, and the trumpet sounds uh, and catches you, amen, a dabbling in sin, uh, and you got to hang your head, uh, can I get an amen? Uh, amen. Praise God. If He catches you in shame, the Bible said there's no place found for you. Uh, now listen to me. Uh, I don't believe that you can be saved uh, 40, 11 times. Uh, I believe that
churches of America today has got religion. Right. Yeah. 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 Let's see I don't care if it's coming out on YouTube. Don't mind to me. If they quit being religious and get salvation, come on, I'm going to preach a little. The abomination that was made desolate, Daniel began to speak about the Daniel prophesied that there'd be a day of coming when they take a daily sacrifice out of the temple of God. Amen. amen. Now they're teaching and preaching. It's just like everything else. It's been thrown out. Amen. Come on, praise God, church. Get in the same way with me. I ain't throw nothing away, sister. I believe it cover to cover. Right, right down to the end. Right down to the periods between the words. I, I believe it's God's word. I, and I believe it's to be lived by. You see them that love him are living for him. And I get an amen. The Bible, the brother Donald Trump read it over there. Amen. He said they just say they love him and keep not his commandments are a liar and a true not in them. And I get a come on. You know why I believe people's having such a hard time? It ain't because they got into a weak God. It's because they never got in. Amen. Amen. So you can't say that. My God will just say Read the Word of God. The Bible teaches me they that do righteousness is of God. They're the children of God. Amen. But they that do evil hate it the light need to come to the light lest their deeds should be reproved. I think people in the church world today, brother, hey man needs a little school to know what's evil and what ain't. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Anything that God said is a sin is evil. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Come on. Yeah. Hey, come on. Hey man, and everybody thinks that good old boys and good old girls ain't no such thing.
They said, they never asked for that one the law. Amen. My God. So we ain't living under the law. We're living by grace. What a New Testament. My God, let me get my New Testament. <laughs> Seems like that's where everybody wants to get to. They want to throw the Old Testament away. And I'm going to tell you something. The Old Testament is a schoolmaster to the New Testament. You can't do without the one, Brother Jerry. Come on now. I'm going to preach a man. Amen. Hey, old Daniel began to prophesy what would come in the house of God. Amen. Hey, my God. Amen. Hey, he said they throw the daily sacrifice away. Amen. Hey, They're teaching their people. You don't have to sacrifice nothing. But hey, amen. The Lord told them to present your body. I live. I told you, man. I'll be sore in the morning. Pray to God, I'm going to preach. I'll get back to this in a minute. I ain't got out Daniel yet. Now the text, you can live like hell, do anything you want to. You're under grace, you go to heaven. That's a lie right out of hell. That's a deception if I've ever heard of it. There's no word in God's word where God's men said you could sin and go to heaven. Amen. Oh my God. Matter of fact, He said the seed that Christ put in you, Kenny Fairclough, Amen, cannot sin. Did you but do you believe that? Come on, I'm talking about, I ain't talking about this old flesh. Paul said in myself would dwell no good thing in my flesh, amen. And he told them when I want to do good, amen, and good friend, I don't know how to perform it, amen. And he said, when I go to do good, I do it not. But I, amen, I do the evil because it's not me but the flesh. He preached about a warfare. that nobody knows you're spicy. Ain't it amazing people that feisty and tell everybody? Yeah. Yeah. I've been feisting for a week. I thought, I think to myself, my God, you just blowed it right there. Yeah, you just kept your mouth shut. Yeah. Ain't nobody supposed to even know it. That's between you and God. But you didn't love it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me, let me get deep in this. You'll catch me. Oh my God, you're talking about wanting to be a greater witness. You're talking about wanting to win souls. Amen. Amen. I believe God called him to be a soul winner. Say, preacher, you're crazy. He's giving him a desire. Amen. You know what's fixing to happen in this brother's life? He don't get to win somebody to Jesus. It'll be better than any dope you've ever seen. It'll be better than any taste of liquor. It'll be an addictive, amen, that you can't get over when you see one person come to that man that you love with all your heart and all the goodness that God's bestowed upon him. You can't help but to one another. Can I get an amen now listen? Woo! My God, I want you to pray just a minute. Praise God. You know what the Bible teaches me about fasting, amen, and praying? You know what the whole ordeal was about fasting, Jeff? Amen. It wasn't just to do without water and suffer for a day or two. Fasting, man, praise God, to do without the world. Amen. Praise God. And you know why? It was to bring the body, this old place, under the subjection of the God. Hey! So you can have the power that God is still in you. And you can raise the dead. And you can cast out demons. And you can heal the sick. Can I get an amen? Amen. 
And you'd have enough power in your life to be a witness for Christ to win them to Jesus. My God, there's more to this thing of living for God than what people want to. Right. My God. Yes, they want to live like hell, talk like hell, and then profess to me that they pray about it. Damn, my God. I don't want you praying for me. If you ain't living for God, don't be praying for me. Can I get an amen? You can't pray, no way. If you got sin in your life, you can't pray. Hey, little no boy. Hey, man, you used to fight with years ago. Amen. I ain't like him. He didn't like me. Well, no love loss. I'm telling you the truth. I was preaching revival. Now, oh boy. Now, praise God. He just said, I miss old Sunday. He ought to thank God now. <laughs> Amen. I ain't always been a preacher. I ain't always been saved. And I ain't always been what you're looking at tonight. Amen. Amen. But praise God, I want you to know something. I was in revival meeting. And now here's where people's deceived. Amen. They're, they're what, hey, come on now. Say, preacher, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. I'm going to preach it anyway. I was a preacher, and that old boy was standing in the church house, lost as a man, as, as, as Josh Jones said, I'm all on the high wage. Hey man, he stood up right in the middle of me of preaching and began to tell people how he prayed for me. And I so mean when I was lost and how he prayed for me. Pray God to stop the meeting. I said, let me tell you something. How did you pray to a God that you don't know? Can I get an amen? How can you pray to a God that you've never been acquainted to? Can I get an amen? You see, he knows me. I know him. He's my God. And when I call, he answers, amen. 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 Don't fool me, <coughs> I didn't pray when I was drunk. The only prayer that I got through was when I hollered for heaven. Amen. 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 Right. I can prove that to you in the Word of God. Can I get an amen? The disciples told him, said, We know that God heareth not sinners, but them that do the will of the Father. Oh, come on now. Now that'll bite you in the bone, won't it? Amen. Can I get an amen? Come on. That'll take all this mess out of our mouth, Brother Bob. Amen. And now we're living in a day and time where anything goes. Can I get an amen? Come on. Amen. Oh, hey, Daniel prophesied the abominations of the children of Israel. He said the daily sacrifice. Is good. You know what the Bible teaches me? To raise up the standards. Lift up the stones. Amen. Build back up the altars in the house of God. And lift up a standard before the people. You know what that standard is? Lay the standard in the house of God to live by. Amen. Amen. I've had people tell me we can't go by standards. And you know why? Because people have messed up so bad. They preach and teach, but I've never heard them say anything about repentance. I've never heard them say get right with God. Now come on. Preach. <coughs> Now, the Bible said, Old Daniel prophesied, he said, When you see the abomination of desolation speaking about the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place where it ought not, he said, All Judea fled to the mountains. Daniel prophesied about a time when the pulpit should be full of people who wouldn't qualify. Amen. Uh, oh, come on, I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm just preaching. They may get an amen. Come on, praise God. Uh, there's certain qualifications in the Word of God for a preacher. Can I get an amen? There's certain qualifications for a deacon. Can I get an amen? Come on, brother. Praise God, you know what I'm a preaching. Come on, church. You know what I'm a preaching. And if you compromise on one thing, then you've got to throw it all out because you've got My God, you better pray. I don't want to get in all of I got a message. Somewhere in all this that I'm a preacher, I got a message. I don't know if the devil's trying to kill me, kid. I'll write it down so somebody can read it. How's that? It gets to why I can't speak. 
But I'm gonna preach this a minute. You see, we're getting ready for one last battle. And you can say whatever you want to, but the end's here, brother. I've watched it, I've seen it. Amen. I've been looking for it, I've been trying to warn people for 20 some years. Amen. If all this stuff is being taught and preached, you know, uh, uh, Brother Jerry taught on a, on a new command, a new covenant. Amen. Praise God taught about the old covenant, the new covenant, and done a great job. Right out of the Word of God. Amen. But that new covenant that brought down the grace, the Bible said that the grace of God that brought salvation appeared to all men, teaching us that to deny an ungodly lust how we should live soberly and righteously in this present world, teaching us how to live, the standard to live by, and under the grace of God. Can I get an amen? We got the standard to live by, child of God. Amen. Amen. I believe in another place he talked about him seeing the hope that was in us. Another place he said, my prayer for Israel, all Israel will be saved. And he went on to tell him, he said, you're an ambassador of Christ Jesus. You know what that is, Jeff, actually, an ambassador. That's a, a representative. Hey, man, when they send a, 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 an ambassador from France or Germany or somewhere like that over to the United States, they're, uh, they're a representative of that country. <coughs> you know, my God, I'm going to preach for you, okay? You know what? <laughs> yeah. You know what they do? They pick the best and that they've got. So it'll look the best. Amen in another country. Can I get an amen? Do you realize, Mitchell Poe, that God chose you to be an ambassador? So he must have seen something good. Hey, hey look around. Hey, man, not only Mitchell Poe, but if you're saved by the grace of an almighty God, he chose you to represent him. Well, that made my hair run. That ought to make you feel like doing better. That ought to make you feel like praise God standing up for Jesus. Oh, come on, man. We're in the last moments. I got to read this, okay? You see, at one time in my life, I, I'm on, can I talk about me just a minute? You see, I have the same struggles as everybody else have the same wonder. There was a time in my life, and you know it because you prayed for me, that I let people hinder me bad. Bad. The things that they've done, the things that they said, the way they lived, hindered me. Hindered me from reading the Bible, hindered me from trusting God, hindered my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? But I'll tell you here, right here tonight, no matter how you live, no matter how you talk, it's not going to affect my salvation. Amen. No matter what kind of strange Bible you read out of, no matter what kind of mess you eat take into your life and into your house, it won't affect me a bit because I'm anchored, I'm steadfast, I'm unmovable, and I believe, amen, that Jesus Christ saved my soul. And they ain't a thing you do about it. Can I get an amen? Amen. Had to trust you with something. The old Brandon called and he said, I just wanted you to know. I said, I've been waiting. I told Keith when we went over to Notre Dame. I said, he won't stay a bit for long. He can't. I know that. Amen. Because God had his hand on him. God's got his hand on a lot of people and praise God they're holding back. Now listen. And he said he couldn't understand why God would even choose him. Why? He said he just wasn't worthy. And I said, well, let me tell you something about a man over there in the Bible. And the Bible said there was a man. And his name was Job. Amen. Now the devil knows who you are. <laughs> if he didn't, he wouldn't more with you. I get to that part in a minute. I ain't, ain't here to preach it. So you better pray. Hey, Amen. Come on. Come on, man. Hey, Amen. The devil walked to and fro upon the earth accusing the brethren. 
Day and night, the Bible said. And he went into the throne room of God and began to tell God, God began to proceed to tell God, there's none righteous. There's none. They ain't none down there on earth any good for nothing. Well, God had one already picked out. Now, you better look at it. I, I get happy on this. You must be right. And God told the devil and said, Satan, he said, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered him? Look at it. He said he's a just and an upright man and a sure of evil. And the devil knew who Job was. The devil, the devil said, you got a hands around me. And if you'll take that hands down, he said, I'll have him to touch you to your face. And God told him, he said, you can have all that he possesses, all that he owns, but you can't touch his life. Better get an amen. And you know why he couldn't touch his life? Because it was anchored in God Almighty. Better get an amen. Job's trust was in something greater than this world. Amen. Now let me go now. I want you to get this. God didn't just choose you to be some of your teacher. <clears throat> God had you picked from a long time ago. He had you picked for Pleasant Chapel Church. Savior Christ. God had me to per uh, God had me pick for Pleasant Chapel Church. Praise God. He ain't about this church. And I want you to get that straight right now. He ain't about this deal, you know. Yeah, preach. It's about what's going on in this field. It's about what God's preaching in this field. It's about the truth system that's saving souls. It's about the drawing power that's bringing people in here. Amen. Come on now. I'm going to preach this to me. But God, amen, has confidence in Job. God just don't randomly pick somebody and use them for such and such things. Praise God. He got them picked because He knows their ability. Can I get them? Amen. Hey, brother. God knows what kind of preacher I was. Hey, man, when I was a heathen. Can I get them? Amen. God knows what kind of man of God I'd be when I was a drunk. God knows, amen, what I'd do and where I'd stand. Amen. Praise God. I told you, Jim. There's a lot of people in here. Uh, I was going down Moore Street. I told this many times, Melissa. And you next to uh, I'd go home. I'd come down to Lansing and talk to you. I'd cry all the way home. I'd pray, my God. Uh, I, oh God. I'd pray and I'd pray. And one evening, I was crying and going up the road praying for Melissa and Jeff. And I was just bawling. And Kelsey kind of looked over me. She reached over got me by the hand. And she said, Dad, you really love me, people. I said, you have no idea. Yeah. I was coming down the road. My God, don't you ever think that you're a fail in this church or ever fail in these kids because God, they have trusted you with our youth group. Can I get an amen? My God, somebody better get a hold of something tonight because this thing's about to get real. Thank you, Lord. I was going down the street one evening and I was praying for help. You ever walk by yourself? <clears throat> I mean, truly walk by yourself when preachers and deacons and churches that you love turn their back on you Amen. for preaching the Word of God. Hey! Yes, it was. I know how it feels. And I was going down the whole street one evening. Before I ever started pastoring here. And I was praying for him. And I said, God, I said, you some help. And I begin to see people's faces. And it's one or two of them ain't got in yet. They come. And it's real close. You believe that? Amen. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you better tell. But right there sits one of the heads. <laughs> That's a head that come to me. Right there they sit in the house of God. God said, Whoo! I said, Lord, but they ain't right with God. And God said, not yet. But he said, something coming. Hey man, just like he told us, that he bones live. And he said, God, thou knowest. Hey, he said, go ahead and prophesy. It wasn't but just a little while. I'll never forget the first time you called. As a preacher, would you come down and say, Grace, we're going to eat that Reuben Price. 
I told the lady, I said, I'm going to What happened? She said, what's the matter with you? I said, they've asked me to come say grace. She said, well, what's that got to do with it? I said, if God ain't a touch in them, and they didn't want to eat a little from God's table, they sure wouldn't have a preacher coming to pray over the food. Can I get an amen? Hey, it don't take much to excite me. You believe God, you know things are going to happen, church. Amen. I want to give you some advice, sister. Don't beat up on yourself. Amen. You know why? God could have chosen any woman in this America to be that child's mom. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand this. You feel like you're failing, you feel like you're slipping backwards. I know how you feel. God chose you to be her mama. So you know what I believe? <laughs> I believe you're going to do something right. Can anybody believe that? I believe God chose you. You ain't lost the bad. You're just fighting the war. Amen. Hey man, can I get it? Amen. But this victory are coming. She'll understand. She'll get it right. Mama is a coming. The peace is a coming. Okay. This is some good preaching. I don't care who's preaching. <laughs> don't you understand? God chose you. Peace. I love you with all my heart, and you know that. Been one of my best friends down through life, gave me a lot of advice, helped me along life's journey. When I was preaching on the radio in Mountain City, Brother Keith and Sister Penn thought I was an old man. Never that. I, you wasn't even saved, then, was you? Penny said that she'd go with Keith to salt the cattle. Said he wouldn't go to church, so she'd go to help him salt the cattle. Said she'd sit in the truck and turn me up. <laughs> Was you say when you come to the three fours? Yeah. So I have to ask her. I don't get But anyway, I was in the Bible and Penny told me they want to go hear me preach up at three fourths Baptist Church. And when she come in, she said, Lord God, I need these just to know me. <laughs> <laughs> to Creek. And many, many, many years ago. God showed me so much and I, I, can I can I just take my time this minute and I'll hurry in a minute. I'll take that back. I ain't gonna hurry. I'm gonna take that back. I ain't gonna hurry. Me and my dad all worked down in Burnsville, North Carolina, and we was going through Limbo one morning. About the time God was showing me my revival tent. Showed me what color it'd be, showed me how size it'd be, showed me everything about the windshield of that old truck and be praying. And there was a place come to me when I was in that revival and as a young man come to my mind. When I got out of the car, I told my wife, I said, my God, there he stands. And she said, who? I said, I've got hold I've been praying for all day. Didn't know who it was. After I got acquainted with Keith and Penny, it was your old son. Praying on Wednesday night. God got a hold of him under a cross. Way down the country. Along South Carolina. Lost his car. Got on drugs, didn't know where he's at. And when he came to himself, he was sitting in the churchyard under a big cross. God saved him, Lord. Called him to preach. Amen. Been through a battle. Been some hard times in his life. And they know what he did. Come on. He said, I've seen some things. Amen. I've seen some things. God put us together for a reason. Amen. I believe it's for the last days. Amen. I believe it's for the last times. Amen. I've got to have somebody. Amen. It's got my back. Amen. That we can get. Woo, come on. I told Brother Josh Jones we'd get back to back. He could preach in that direction. I'd preach in this direction. And they couldn't get behind us to stab us in the back. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm preaching? You see, God chose you. Tonight, God chose you. 
We might make mistakes. But then Joe Perry, God don't make mistakes. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now come on, I, I'm, I've got to finish this up. I, uh, we'll be here all night there. I got a lot to say. God's got me in a place that He's just drawing people from everywhere. All over the world. Calling and talking to the preacher. And the only thing I can brag on is Jesus. Amen. It ain't about me. It's about God. and about what God can do in your life. Do you believe Him to the extent that you'll let God bring amen, a blessing into your life that you can use for the glory of God? Come on, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Come on. Amen. Keith Rourke is, uh, like I say, he's one of my best friends. Yeah. I never put up no hay. You know how I've got the iron on the tractor anyway, and I've been trying to do it for several years, but still, I'm good at it. First time I ever met Keith in my life, he came out of the church up there and he said, You got any livestock? I said, Yes, more horses. He said, You need some hay? I said, Yeah, I do need some hay. And he said, uh, I don't have any for sale, but I said, Well, I've got something. Can't get nobody to cut it. He said, I said, I'll just pay you to cut it. He said, No, I'll just come get my equipment and use it. Never seen him before in my life. I thought this man is strange. <laughs> Who would you offer a stranger and stuff? And I told him, I said, no, I don't know how to use it. He figured that out. <laughs> but he took his vacation and put my hay up for nothing. When he let me buy, when he let me buy the diesel. I didn't have a tractor. I didn't have nothing. You haven't even wanted to put our hay in the barn. We had a Jeep Cherokee. You remember that old Jeep Cherokee? Had a little flatbed trailer. When they ran bailed it, praise God, we pulled it aside and flipped it up on it. And I tied a rope and I pulled it in the back of the barn and she took the Jeep to it and pulled it up in the barn. That's how we got her hay in. When she was pregnant, she'd have to carry hay bales. So she got so heavy she couldn't carry the hay bales. She just drove the truck. I packed the mini load four or five times before I couldn't get it packed and follow her. And man, let me tell you something. And I sat there up there on the ball in the ball holler and I watched that man go around the hill on that tractor and build my hay. Wouldn't charge me a dime. And God said, if I give you a tractor, would you do that for somebody? And I didn't stop and think, people. I thought, no, I probably wouldn't. And Keith don't even know it, but I got down behind that barn and I repented. And I asked God to please help me. And I tried my best to if I said. God's blessed me with two old tractors. The equipment to do it myself. And I've tried my best to be a help, brother, to everybody that needs it. Amen. It ain't mine. It ain't my tractors. They belong to God. Amen. amen. For the glory of God. Can I get them? Amen. amen. And I've been blessed. And that old tractor that Keith used, they told me when he bought a transmission wasn't wise, it's still running now. And that's been many, many, many years ago. See, God shows you, <clears throat> handpicked you. Everybody that's sitting in this church tonight, God has handpicked. And you know why? Because He trusts you. Amen. He trusts you. Amen. You know, He knows my back would be out before I started preaching. Do you know that? He gave me bronchitis so I'd cough that my back would fly out of place. Do you anybody believe that? Amen. That didn't do it. Right. My God, let me tell you something. The devil didn't do it. Amen. The devil don't do everything you blame on him. Right. Did you know the devil can't do nothing to you till God gives him leeway? Can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. I believe God put me there at home so I can read more, talk to more people, and figure out where I'm supposed to be. And this thing ain't there. And it ain't there over yet. This year's going to get exciting. Mark her down. I'm on, I gotta read this. I, boy, I get started on God. I can't hush. I don't even know where I got to. And the Bible said, in the in the ninth verse, He said, "Then said He unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live." So I prophesied as he commanded me, and, he, and the breath came into them, 
And they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Did you hear what I said? Amen. An exceedingly great army. Come on. God has sent you a message to let you just know tonight that praise God you're on the battlefield. Amen for Jesus. And God, amen, got you in training. You may have been in training for many years, but praise God, it's time. God, you're getting you ready to stand up and fight. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Sister, time goes on. You ain't seen what's fixing to happen. Teenagers is a lot worse than what you're facing in this. But you know what God's getting you ready for? The teenagers. You're going to be alright, Mom. You see, you're living on your own understanding and trying to figure it out. Trust God. Amen. Trust God. So God, you got it. You take it. Help me, lead me. Help me to say what you want me to say, Mom. Direct my faith, direct my words. Touch my heart. Amen. Help me not to get mad. Now I'm going to tell you something right now, and you may not understand, you may not believe this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I probably got one of the worst tempers that there's anybody in this church. Probably do. Give me something else, right? I'm going to tell you here. <laughs> God took the drink, He took the cuss, He took the wine. But he led you with a temper. You see, everybody thinks a temper's a bad thing. No, it's not. That temper's going to help you. If you don't have a temper and enough grit to stand, you'll never stand. You'll be wishing lost. You see, you've got to have so much temper, but you've got to learn to control it. You see, this is the key. You've got to learn to control it. There's been a many, many, many a time. Amen. He would have been easier to break somebody's nose than to walk off. Now somebody will say amen because somebody knows what I'm preaching tonight. You see, most preachers won't tell you this because they're afraid of ridicule. I get ridiculed so much. It don't really matter to me. I'm telling you the truth. But you know what God has trained me for? To help you. I still got a temper. A bad temper. But when things go sour anymore, God's given me literally just a lot. There's a thing, there's a time in my life if, if uh, we'd have tore that bin off my trailer, Jamie's in the morning, I'd blame Jamie jumped all over him. Then we'd have had a big fight, amen. But pray they like tickle me to death. Jamie's running up and down on top of that trailer like a big squirrel. <laughs> My God, he just hit one time up on the truck and right up on top of the trailer and he's hollering. My God, preacher, we broke the bin off of this thing. I got that. He said, what's so funny? I said, you don't realize how many of them things I broke off in that door up right there. Come on, people. How the heck do you mess up so many times? I go, wow. When that man, man, it flares up, it's sort of hilarious. Can I get it? Amen. Come on, people. Come on. They preach your heart. Temper ain't funny. He will be one of these days. Age and years will take care of that. Say, preach I don't know. And I get pretty cloudy whenever I need to. Amen. But I can tell you right now, I'm playing for a lot of me like it used to. Amen. Now tomorrow I'll probably fly off to hell and just, you know, you gotta be careful what you say. But I'll say it this way, by the grace of God. It don't bother me like you said. You're young, sister. You're going to grow. Just keep trusting. Don't give up. The main thing is don't give up. When something don't work, try something else. When you don't think you can get through the day, try to pray to the next morning. Amen. The next morning always makes things look a little better. Can I get an amen? amen. When these young people come to me and they're all mad and they're going to leave one another, and, oh, they, at the moment, they ain't nothing going to satisfy them. Can I get an amen? They got their mind made up that praise God they're going to leave. It's all done. I ain't a habit to want them no more. Best thing ever happened to me when they packed their clothes and moved out. So I don't want them no more. So what do you think? Preach, I said, well, the best thing I think you can do is shut up and wait till tomorrow. Uh, 
Als ze rapa dus wijken, dan in de man. Hij is still like king, pray. And the biggest part of the time, pray, but in the morning, the tempers calm down. Yeah. Next day, we'll be together again. And they'll come and say, Preacher, we got back together, and I just like <laughs> So I know it's coming. Amen. Don't worry, brother. God, will take care of that tip. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be all right. Amen. I promise you, a few more years, sister, you, if I'm still alive, you tell me. Okay? He ain't going to admit it, but you tell me. Amen. <laughs> Come on. I love this tonight. I pray to God. You're an army. You're in warfare. And it ain't just another army. You know what God chose you for? Huh? To win the battle. Don't you understand that God put you in an exceedingly great army, Brother Jack? And the side that we're on, don't lose. Come on, anybody know what I'm preaching? We're on the winning side of this thing. I don't see men. Read right in the book. The Lord didn't say we wouldn't think of these losing the battle. The Bible said in the last days, God and may God together to set up the battle. And they're teaching and preaching today that they're going to war against one another. And that ain't the Bible. According to the Word of God, they're coming together, amen, to come up on the bread. They're gathering together to battle. They're not warring against one another. They're coming together. Antichrist and the Antichrist followers are coming together for battle. One last battle. And the Bible said they come up on the breadth of the earth and camp around the saints. Look out now. Dude, get a hold of this. Great. They said that the fire yeah. would fall out of heaven yeah. and consume them. Can I get them, amen? You say, I ain't just another preacher. I've been chosen. Amen. Mama didn't call me. Granny didn't call me. Daddy didn't call me. God chose me to preach in the left hour of office. I believe that He called your son to preach in the left hour. I remember when He got saved. I was there. I remember it. You. Oh my God. I can remember the old prayer meetings we used to have. Hey man, on Friday nights, college meetings we used to call them. I remember old Hunter and your mom and dad's house. Hey man, down the floor and then with your grandpa. Woo! Hey! Praise God, amen. The scripture began to come. Incline thine ear and eat that which is good and let your soul be filled with fatness. And that old man shouted all over the house. I'll never forget it that night. He done got a hold of something. Boy, I miss you. I miss you. My God, I'm telling you, I'm. Huh? You believe any boys that's in the jailhouse can leave? Amen. You believe that? Amen. Huh? Amen. They ain't got much but time. Amen. Come on. Amen. They're in there now. They're going to have to listen to something. Amen. They asked me a while back if I'd be a chaplain at the jail. I might want to think that over a little bit. <laughs> I might just try it for one day anyway. Amen. Practice run. I love you tonight. I'm going to try to help. There's a lot on my mind. Man. Child of God, don't you ever forget God picked you. He trusted you. And that, that's what I don't understand. So God trusted you with these kids. Now God didn't say. And I'll tell you from experience. The Bible said to raise up a child in the way it should go, and when it grows old, it shall not depart from it. Amen. But now, between where they're at and getting older, there's a lot of mistakes that you make. Am I telling this right? Yes. No matter what mistakes they make, it don't change the fact that they're yours. Amen. Amen. You're their mama, no matter what. And you got to remember, God picked you. Amen. Amen. 
God gave you to be their mom. So God had to see something. You got a feeling they went, come on, say you put you pleasant chapel church. Yeah. 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 Hey. You know one thing that praise God that that that, uh, that, 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 that I can brag about the fact that this church is because of the Holy Ghost is here. Amen. It ain't because of the oak floors. It ain't because of the pretty Amen, all the remodeling. It ain't got a thing to do with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's because of the truth. Amen. The truth is being preached. Don't ever take that for granted, folks. Don't ever take it for granted because it's so easy to be caught up in this easy stuff. That's why I tell people it's been a little bit of to say that God's telling them to go somewhere, leaving the church. If God's a believe, believe God's leaving them somewhere else. And it's been six months and they still ain't found a place. Something's wrong. He's right. God don't work that way. It's about to call me. That God was showing him that me and him was supposed to go out to Missouri. <laughs> Sell everything I had and go to Missouri with him. <laughs> so you know how I said, Are you crazy? He says, That's what God showed me. He said, I'm going out there to hunt a supply. Well, I said, You go on and I'll be a prey. And if God shows me, I said, I'll sell everything I got and we'll go to Missouri. <laughs> Amen. He got up there and he searched county after county after county and could not find a place. And he come back and I said, you're telling me God said for us to go? I said, don't you believe the same God that's telling us to go that doesn't have us a place fixed? Huh? Come on. God don't send you to a place to wander around idle for six months. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. That's just like the brothers talking about people praying. It's praying in the flesh. And when they get the things of the flesh, they say, God done it. God didn't do it. There's a fellow told me, praise God, one time. And I, I, I've been in some of the craziest stuff you ever seen. <clears throat> a couple separated. Wife cheating on the husband. They thought we want me to go to the council and I didn't know all the stuff that was going on. So when I met them, we was at the guy's house she's having a fire with. They sat there and drank coffee just like it was a picnic. And I'm thinking, my God, folks, I'm not going to Huh? I couldn't have been that caught if a man had been messing around with my wife. There'd have been something happening, okay? Huh, God? I'm sitting here with my Bible in my hand and thinking, what is the matter with you? <laughs> and this man gets to telling me, telling her husband, said she can come back to you. And, Amen. And if she won't stay with you, she'll come back to me. And said, when we get done, she come back to you. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, I wouldn't take that from nobody. Hmm? My, I mean, I'm sitting here with crazy people. And all of us, this guy said, we're going to pray. And God told us it was all right what we've been doing. Well, I had about enough. I said, all right, that's enough. It's a bunch of junk. I said, let me read to you out of the book what my God says about this situation. I said, I don't know who your God is, but he must be the devil. Because I said, what's to lead you in this thing? Hey, I'm God. Can I get a man? Hey, I'm God. Can I get a man? My God. Read him up. Amen. That old boy jumped up and he said, if Jesus Christ himself stood right in front of me, said what you said, I'd call him a liar. Well, now he messed with the other man's wife. But you don't insult my God. I don't care who you are. That's all it took. I jumped up in the middle of the floor and I told him face to face. I said, the best thing you can do is sit down and shut up because you are going to get in trouble. And I said, first of all, you need to get right with God. And I said, God did not approve of what you're doing. It's a sin and it's ungodly. And I said, furthermore, if I had been that man that sat right over there, 
I said, I'd have torn your house all to pieces by now. Can I get an amen? amen? Somebody say amen. Say, preacher, that ain't good advice. My God, that's the only thing I can think of. He ought to thank God that it wasn't me sitting over there because something bad would have happened, preacher, no preacher. Can I get an amen? amen. Say, preacher, that's on you too. I hope it is because if a preacher's and be honest, everybody else would follow suit. Amen. 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 Craziest thing ever said. Families tore apart. And people said God said it's all right. That's a lie. It's a lie. God don't institute that stuff. People's crazy. I, I'll rephrase it. People's son of God. People's wicked. I'm going to hush. I, I ain't going to keep you here all night. My back's about to get limbered up now. Hey man, I, I move a little man. We'll be all right. Let me tell you something. I love you. God chose you. Can you God chose you. I told you you were going to have to go on that too. I know you love me. I'm proud of you. He's worried about this thing for me. God said he wouldn't have to go. He didn't have to go. Did There's a lot of things God's going to do for you that's going to really, hey amen, surprise you. Don't you worry about that. Amen. God's got this thing, man. Amen. I'm going to hush tonight. I, I just feel so good. I, I don't know about everybody else. Uh, anybody want to sing? You sing? Yeah? Can't give me another one. If somebody will have to sing, I ain't singing another. I'm going to stub up. Hey, man, listen to me tonight. Uh, we're going to do if, if nobody wants to sing we're going to dismiss you as a worshiping congregation you go away and pray and come back and pray there's a whole list of people we need to pray for tonight people depending on us to pray and believe God let's just go back and believe God what do you say let's fight for a good fight of faith and, and stand up and see the great honor amen we're alive anybody in this church alive amen Amen, when Jesus found it. Amen. <laughs> All right. You're living together. Nobody's going to sing. <laughs> oh.